Good afternoon, y'all. Today's video is gonna be a little bit of a behind the scenes. I'm working on a story for Chevy High Performance where we build the worst junkyard LS motor known to man. It's a uh, six liter LQ9 motor that came out of a 2005 Cadillac Escalade. It had been on fire and also had a ton of water damage on the interior and I uh, was totally seized up totally junk and uh, pulled it apart and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun in the magazine. I'll make sure to let you know when it shows up, but in the course of pulling it down, we realized one of the heads was totally gone. So I bought two more heads from the junkyard and today's task is to get these new cylinder heads, which are just marginal at best, up and running just so I can get a couple power pulls on the dyno with the engine and then start having some real fun with it. So I thought this might make a fun video on an absolute low buck cylinder head rebuild using some of the tips and tricks I've picked up from engine builders over the years. And here are the replacement heads I pulled off of another six liter block at the junkyard. Now I got lucky because LQ9 and LQ4 six liter LS's are really tough to come by, but this engine was totally seized up and I was able to get the heads because they still seemed usable and uh, left everything else behind. These are GM 317 heads. And as you can tell, I've already pulled the rocker arms and the rocker arm standoff and I've cleaned things up as best I can with a pressure washer. Also got the ubiquitous broken exhaust stud here. What's life without a broken exhaust stud? But as you can see, they're still pretty grungy. And I think the first thing that I'm gonna do just to check the, the quality of these heads is check and see if the valve seat seal is still good. Now, a reputable engine builder is gonna do that with a vacuum tester. Those things are pretty pricey but I want to give you a down and dirty test, just a go, no go, to see if the valve seats are still sealing well. Okay, for this test, the first thing I needed to do was put a spark plug in each of the spark plug holes just to plug those holes. And now I'm gonna make sure I have the head as about as level as I can get it and fill each combustion chamber with water. Now, if you have a bad leak, water's gonna run right out the port. Hopefully your head's better than that. So far, so good. And with that, I've just got an air chuck on an airline, and I'm gonna blow air in through the ports to see if I can get any bubbles past the valve. If I see any bubbles come up, then I know I've not got good sealing between the combustion chamber and the port. Another tip is don't put the air chuck all the way up in the port like that, because if you have lightweight springs, sometimes you can actually push the spring open. So just hold it a little bit off the port and see how it does. So here we go. Man, I'm impressed. I thought for sure we'd have something here. Let's try the exhaust side. Huh, nothing. As bad as these valves look, that's a lot better than I expected. Now, if you are using iron heads or just worried about using water, you can also use uh, mineral spirits or uh, denatured alcohol, anything like that. But uh, since I'm gonna be pulling everything apart, I wasn't worried about the water. I'm gonna get everything dried off and, and not too worried about the rust. But now it's time to get busy. This is a valve spring compressor tool that's specific to LS style cylinder heads. And I like it because it works with the heads either on or off the engine. It's pretty simple and you can pick one up for about 55 bucks or so. If you're going to be working with LS engines often, then this is definitely a wise investment in my book. And I know we're talking about low buck rebuilds, but if you're interested in purchasing this tool for yourself, I'll include a link for it in the description below. Now in my book, valve stem seals should be considered consumables. You could take a chance on reusing these, but I have no intention of getting an engine back together and then seeing smoke come out the tailpipe and having to tear it back apart again. So I went ahead and spent 27 bucks on a new set of valve stem seals to install on these heads. Now again, we're talking low buck rebuild. So if you wanna to try to get away without using the tools, that's fine. You can use a standard set of pliers and probably pull these off, but I love my valve stem removal install toolkit. Uh, these are the pliers for removal. 
and this driver helps you get them back on straight so you don't tear or bend or otherwise damage your new seals. Flip this over so you can see a little better. Now the, uh, the valve stem seal pliers actually have serrated edges in here to help you get hold of everything. So you just grab hold and yank them off. Now the LS valve stem seals have a metal jacket on them which helps protect them, but small block stuff is uh, just bare Viton, so these are really helpful to get them off without tearing anything up. Now before you get too far into this, one quick test you want to make sure of is that your valve guides are still good and not worn. Because if your valve guides are worn, your low buck rebuild has to go to the machine shop and then we start adding the bucks to it. Easy test for that, take your valve, run it in upside down through the top of the head and see if you have any wiggle room in there. If the valve is loose in the guide, that means the guide is worn and you've got serious repairs ahead of you or else you're going to be leaking oil or have premature valve failure. All these feel pretty good, so I think we're okay to keep moving forward. Now that I know the valve guides are good, I wanted to spend a few minutes cleaning the deck of the heads. I want to avoid paying a machine shop to cut the deck of the heads, if at all possible, because I think they're still pretty straight. But you have to be careful removing the remnants of the head gasket from the aluminum cylinder heads. If you use them with a drill or a die grinder, even a scotch brite pad or a plastic bristle brush can dig into the aluminum and create sealing problems for a head gasket. So I'm spraying on gasket remover, letting it sit for about 10 minutes, and then using a carbide scraper to carefully, and let me emphasize that, carefully scrape away the head gasket material that's stuck to the deck of the cylinder heads. You can get away with using a razor blade here, but a carbide scraper like this just won't gouge into the aluminum as easily. It does a pretty good job, and after this I'll use a lot of shop rags, lacquer thinner, and elbow grease to remove the rest by hand. And here are some of the valves. I've just wiped the worst of the oil off of them, but they are still really grungy, gnarly. Lots of rust, lots of buildup on them, and so we need to clean these up as best we can. Now, one thing you can do if you've got a glass beater is clean them up that way. Uh, these are just stainless valves, but again, this is low buck, so we're going to do it the low buck way. We're just going to take a little bit of painter's tape, wrap it around the stem of the valve just to protect it a little bit, and then chuck it up in a drill. Now this may seem a little bit irresponsible. And you do have to be careful. Don't chuck it up real tight, just enough to get it snug in there. What we're gonna do is uh, spin this valve to get it good and clean. A Little bit of lubricant, both sides of the valve. And then I'll just spin it up using a Scotch-Brite pad and uh, polish this up a little bit, knock the worst of the rust off. Knock Now again, you don't want to be too aggressive. We're not going to polish this up so it looks just like new, but we're just going to knock the worst of the rust off and help it get a good seal. And here we go. Here's our touched up valve compared to one the way it came out of the head. Uh, we got a lot of the, oh, come back here. A lot of the grunge and scale up off of it and definitely a lot nicer. So now I just need to finish up the other 15. And now that we've got some spiffy clean valves, the next task up will be to lap in the valve seats. Now, since we didn't have any leakage before, you might say it's unnecessary, but really this is cheap, easy, and just requires a little bit of elbow grease. So might as well do it just to get the best possible valve seat seal that you can get. Say that five times fast, valve seat seal. Lapping the valves will just clean up that seating area. And over here, I've already done one so that you can see the difference there. Just makes it a whole lot nicer. 
So here's my valve lapping compound. I just picked it up off of Amazon. And with all of the other tools that I'm using, I'll include a link down below in the description. The, way, the best way to do it is simply to uh, apply some around the seat area of the valve. Then drop it in place. The valve lapping compound is gritty, so by spinning the valve inside against the seat, it cleans up any rough surfaces there. And I'm just using my stick here to spin it up. I'll just do this a little bit. Every once in a while, spin it so you're not running the same places over and over again. Keep downward pressure on it, and you'll hear it when it smooths out. There we go. Now let's see what we got. Pull the valve out, clean it up, as well as the seat. Let's see if we can get a good shot here. So now you can see this dull gray area right here. That is the valve seating surface. And then you can also see it on the head. Lapping the valves just helps clean up the entire seating surface for the best combustion chamber seal over the long term. Alrighty then. So that's done. And an important thing to remember is that valve lapping compound is very gritty. That's the whole point is high friction. So I've just spent about half a can of brake clean, cleaning off the head as best I can get it. All the head ports, all the valve seats, all the valves. Make sure all of that lapping compound is out of there and the head is just as clean as it can be. And now we're ready to start assembly. First things first, we're gonna put the new valve seals back in place. Now I consider valve stem seals consumables. Anytime you're gonna do a rebuild, it's time for a new set. And uh, I just spent about $27 for a set of Felpros. Um, these work great. Remember that there is one type, these are the black for the intakes, and then a second, these have brown on the seal for the exhaust. And you just pop them in place here. Now, if you're putting these over uh, on an assembled head, over valves, make sure that you've got good lubrication here. Not too necessary right now for what we're doing because we'll lubricate the valve stem when we put it all together. Now I do have a valve stem installing kit. It came with the, uh, the pliers that I showed you earlier. And this just slots right over the top of the uh, valve stem seal, just like that. Pushes on the outside shoulder so you don't damage the ID of the seal because it is a little more fragile and just pound it in place. But since we're talking about low buck, here is the no buck option. This is a, uh, let's see here, 20 millimeter uh, deep well socket. It sits right over the top. And let me see here, drops right on that shoulder right there so you can press the, uh, the valve stem seal in place. So just set it right there. I'm gonna set this so it's a little more level and just drive them in. Make sure you keep it just as steady and level as you can get it. Always square to the valve guide. And just like that, it's time to start reassembling the cylinder head. Now all along, I have kept my valves, springs, locks, and retainers together, and I've kept them in order so I know where they go back in the head, so they go right back in where they came out originally. Now remember, this engine has run, so these valves and the seats have run in together. Now we've lapped them together. We need to keep them together to make sure we get that best possible seal. And it's always just a good idea to keep the springs with the right valves and everything. They've already made it together, just like a cam and lifters. Keep them together. You don't have to worry about it. So as I install the valves, I'm just going to put a little engine assembly lube on the stems. Lubricate it good. Be very careful sliding it back up through the brand new uh, valve stem seals, and off we go.
Now we got them all in. We'll give each valve, make sure we're not hitting the stand. Quick pop with the hammer to make sure everything's fully seated. And we're good to go. Okay, so there we go. One cylinder head ready to rock and roll. Not the greatest in the world, but it might work. I will take it to my machine shop. I want to uh, double check and make sure that the decks are good and flat. They'll check it for me if it needs to be uh, cut and they'll disassemble if necessary and rewash and everything. But hopefully it'll be good like this. I just don't want to take a chance on bolting it on and blowing a head gasket right away. But all that's left to do now is the next cylinder head all over again. But you don't want to watch that. But thanks again if you've made it this far. Really appreciate it. Please consider subscribing, uh, hitting that like button. It always helps a lot. And I know we talked about this being a low buck restoration, um, but if you are interested in any of the tools that I use, the valve spring compressor, um, the lapping sticks or the lapping compound or anything like that, I will include links where you can find them in the description below. Thanks again and see you next time.